So you might have heard by now that Intrepid plans to discuss their server meshing technology in the next development livestream. You may have also heard a ton of information on this that may or may not be correct, and a lot of people are hyped up, but a lot of people also seem to be hyped up for the wrong reasons. So I am here with my very little knowledge that I have whipped together to try and paint a picture for all of you on what we could expect from Intrepid. First things first. All Intrepid has told us is that they will be showcasing their server meshing technology this coming Friday. That's it. No other information outside that. And while depending on how Intrepid does this could be extremely exciting for the game and the MMO genre in general, it could also be done in a way that does not exactly reinvent the wheel at all and is something that MMORPGs have done for a while now. So starting out, this right here, this is your typical video game world. You may recognize this as World of Warcraft or something that as we have come to know as a server. A bunch of technology most of us don't understand used to host copies of the exact same game world many times over to fit multiple different players. In World of Warcraft, you log in, you select what we call a server, and jump in and play on that server with however many people are allowed to before it's capped off and you get stuck in a queue. You can then travel between servers or what you know as instances to get to other parts of the map or inside dungeons and raids. Over time though, this evolved a bit into what Blizzard called phasing, or pretty much what we know as sharding today. We first saw this in Wrath of the Lich King in the Death Knight start-in area, where more of the story progression for players could be put in different versions of a shard on a server depending on players' progression, so they could see the world change from their interactions with the questing, but the downside was you could only see players that are on the same point of progression as you are, or the same shard. This eventually got used in a way to reduce server strains, not only in WoW but other MMOs as well, and would put groups of people in their own shards or servers, and those would be the ones you could see or interact with. The downside to this though is they seem to take away from that massive feeling of MMORPGs, and cities and regions started to feel a bit more abandoned even on the full servers due to players being split between these shards. When it comes to server meshing, well there are two versions of this feature, the first being static meshing, which this version of meshing has been used for years in MMOs such as Ultima Online, Guild Wars, or more recently Pax Day. Using Pax Day for an example, you have this world map. The regions in this map are each divided into their own unique servers, but you can pass through them and in and out of these regions mostly seamlessly. A lot of the time you may stutter a little or have a little lag while you wait for that next server to load up as you're heading into it, but overall there's no loading screens or anything really holding you up. The perks of this are it helps maintain the server population while not having the entire world straining that one server. Each region's systems, or in the case of Pax Day, player-owned buildings are all in their specific servers, but these servers are working together to make what feels like a seamless world, allowing for more players to build things without it impacting other players' performances. Each static mesh has its own particular job to run, and it's always there to do that job no matter what. It's not going to end up being repurposed to do something else, because it's always going to run that one region for you. Nothing about this server meshing is considered groundbreaking. While it will help Ashes of Creation with server stability and keeping these larger planned battles in specific regions, and not impacting the entire server when they're happening, but the technology isn't new. What could be groundbreaking though is what is called dynamic meshing. This is something that really doesn't fully exist yet. We've only seen it attempted with Star Citizen and even then they haven't quite nailed it down with their $700 million safe raised. Essentially what dynamic meshing does is as areas become more congested either due to sieges, world events, or just server prime time, the game will recognize this and spin up more servers to help ease the performance. These servers basically come and go as needed and if a server is completely vacant, it will shut itself offline. Each of these servers will interact with each other in real time, creating these seamless environments in the congested area. Every player will stay visible to other players in these areas, projectiles and objects will seamlessly travel from server to server, so battles with NPCs or players will continue to pass through them, doing the correct damage and showing the same thing for everybody. And the world is still going to feel completely as one, not isolating anyone or anything. If 
if this could be done properly and actually pulled off at the level that it feels completely seamless, it could allow for Ashes of Creation to really scale up on these massive battles they have planned. It could be the key to their 500v500 battles, bringing on more servers to support it, potentially even getting numbers greater than that if they allowed it. It could also be massive in a sense that it could help reduce server merges or prevent them altogether at the launch of the game, as Intrepid could boost the numbers on the main servers with the support of the meshing, instead of creating entirely new worlds that would eventually die out and would require one server to lose out on many things such as freeholds, housing, and castles that they're merged into, it instead just generates more servers that support that one world. But again, no MMO that we know of has successfully pulled this off to the scale that Intrepid would need. I'm not saying that it can't be done, because if anyone could pull off something like this, I believe it's Intrepid, but I wouldn't get your hopes up on it either, and it's very likely we hear something more in line with static meshing than dynamic next week. But that's the key. Until next week, we can only speculate, and I'm really looking forward to see what Intrepid has planned when it comes to the performance and networking of a game that is meant to be massive on all scales.